like us to turn in our Bibles to Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to read from the New International Version, beginning in verse 3, and uh, please follow along with me. For by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. And just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. And if it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. The book of Romans is known as being the constitution of Christianity. It's different than many of the other books in that it lays down the foundational truths of the Christian faith. Where 1 Corinthians is kind of like a counseling book, counseling on problems of marriage and sacrificing meat to idols and spiritual gifts all kinds of problems Paul was counseling the church on. Romans is different. Romans sets down the foundational truths of Christianity, and I believe that's what he's doing here in the area of spiritual gifts. I think there's something unique about this list of gifts in Romans chapter 12. And I believe that the first part of the uniqueness is that it's kind of like a coin. On one side of the coin is the spiritual gift that we just read about. But what's interesting is is that on the other side of the coin, each of these is also a Christian responsibility. And we're going to see today that as we fulfill the responsibilities that are on this list that you see behind me, an amazing thing begins to happen over time As we do all of these as a duty, we begin to see which of these is a special delight, a gift that God has given to us. And so it is that, starting from the end of the list, every Christian is to show mercy. Jude 1, 22, be merciful to those who are in doubt, snatch others from the fire and save them. Every Christian is to lead when they're needed to lead. For instance, every person leads and manages their own family well. Every Christian is to give. Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given unto you. Every Christian is to encourage. Romans or uh, Hebrews 3, 13, let us encourage uh, each other daily so that we will not be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. We are to teach one another. Paul says in Romans chapter 15, 14, I'm confident, brothers, that you're able to, that you're full of goodness and competent and complete in knowledge and able to instruct, to teach one another. Every Christian's to serve. Every Christian is to proclaim and to shine God's truth, which is what we'll see as the core meaning of this word prophecy. And so there's an amazing thing that happens here, and that is 
as we do these different responsibilities, over time, we begin to discover where God has uniquely and specially gifted us. And I believe that these gifts are like a Christmas present, a birthday present. When we're born again, God gives us a present. And that's one of these gifts that motivates us all through our Christian life, even as we do all of these as a responsibility. So how do we discover our spiritual gift? One way is we look at the growing passion in our own heart. Is it to teach God's word? Is it to be a servant to God's people? Is it to be merciful to those who are hurting? And then also we hear from our brothers and sisters, you know, I really believe that God has gifted you to lead. I really believe that God has gifted you to encourage people. It's amazing how I see that gift shining in your life. And so as we look at how we are motivated and how others see us, we can have more and more understanding of how God has uniquely gifted us, and we can use those gifts to God's glory. Well, as we go through this list today, what I'd like us to do is to look at these gifts through the lens of a Bible character. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at each of these gifts that you see behind me, and we're going to look at a Bible character that I believe manifests this gift. Now, we could have many spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, there are many manifestations of the Spirit that are spiritual gifts, but we're looking uniquely at this inner drive that God gives to us and how we see it in some of the great people in Scripture, that it becomes more and more clear that they're especially gifted here. And the first one we'll look at is Paul. And I believe he's a great example of someone who is wired, who is gifted to be a big P prophet. He gave us the written word of God. He was able to foretell the future. He told the leaders of Ephesus that, they would never see him again as he parted from their company on the beach. In Acts chapter 20, it's described, and they, it says they wept because he said they would never see him again, and they knew that he could predict the future because of this gift of prophecy, the big P gift. I personally believe that this big P gift and this big A gift of apostle no longer is here, that these were foundational to the beginning of the church. But I do believe there's a continuing small p gift, a gift of shining forth God's truth and the motivation to do that, to forth tell, not to foretell. And so in my view, Paul had this as well. And we see that one of the signs of this, one of the characteristics of this small p gift as well is, is that this kind of a person is very straightforward with the truth. And they're also often very strong. I think of Paul and Barnabas. Paul, this gifted prophet of God. Barnabas, this encourager that, we look, that we'll look at a little bit, but we looked at in a previous session more completely. When they came into conflict in Acts chapter 15, Paul, with this gift of prophecy, this drive to be straightforward, to drive toward the goal, Barnabas and Paul clashed. They went different directions. And I think we see clearly this gift of prophecy, big P, giving us God's word, but also the little p. And then we can go on to a second person in Scripture, and this, this second gift, the gift of serving. And this is the gift of being motivated to meet practical needs. We're going to look at a character named Stephanus, but before we look at him in 1 Corinthians, I want us to hear the story, which is one of my favorites, called The Keeper of the Spring, a spring of water. This story is told by Peter Marshall in his book, Mr. Jones, Meet the Master. And here's the story of the Keeper of the Spring. And I believe this shows us this gift of serving. Once upon a time in a certain town, 
at the foot of a mountain range, high in the hills, a strange, quiet forest dweller took it upon himself to be the keeper of the spring. He patrolled the hills, and wherever he found a spring, he cleaned out the soot, the fallen leaves, the mud, the mold, so that the spring could flow down the hillside, clean and cold and pure. Meanwhile, the grist mills in the town would whirl with this wonderful water. Gardens were refreshed. Fountains threw water into the air like diamonds. Swans sailed across the surface. Children laughed at the side of the bank. But the city council was a group of hard-headed businessmen, and they looked at the budget one day, and they found a small salary for the keeper of the spring. They said, why should we pay this guy? We never see him. He's not necessary to our town. If we just build a reservoir, that will keep the water, dispense the water out, and then we can get rid of his salary and his services. And before long, the council voted, and so he no longer went to these pools. He watched from the heights as they built the reservoir. It filled with water, but the water was not the same. Soon a green scum began to appear on the surface. Constant troubles began to happen with the mills. Finally, the city council acknowledged their mistake, and they once again brought back the keeper of the spring. I love this story because I believe the gift of serving is this kind of gift in a local church. There are some people who are motivated to just meet basic needs, and they keep the machinery of the church running. I think of one person who was very introverted and very shy, a woman who had a couple of children, and she really didn't like to be seen or known in our church. But every Sunday, she was in the nursery taking care of children, taking care of those diapers, cleaning up. I think of another guy named Shorty who couldn't teach, couldn't lead, didn't want to. But every Saturday for a small stipend, he would come and clean our building, and it looked great every Sunday and through the week because Shorty was there. That's the gift of serving, and every church needs those who serve. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. In the New Testament, the person who shows us this gift of serving is a man named Stephanus. And he's referred to in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 15 to 18, where Paul writes, you know that the household of Stephanus were the first converts in Achaia, and they had devoted themselves to the service of the Lord's people. And I urge you, brothers and sisters, to submit to such people and to everyone who joins in the work and labors at it. And I was glad when Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus arrived, because they have supplied what was lacking from you, for they refreshed my spirit and yours also, and such men deserve recognition. That's that gift of serving. Not wanting to be recognized, but needing to be recognized. Refreshing the spirit of people behind the scenes. 